July 31st, 1995. It had been 17 years since I'd been back there. When I come, I remember the wind. The scenery and buildings from the surrounding area hadn't changed a bit. I saw Birkin standing on the helipad. He arrived before I did. Meeting with him somehow already seemed nostalgic. It had been four years since I had left the Arclay Research Center. Four years ago, when Birkin's proposed G-Virus plan was approved, I put a transfer request for the data information section and my request was immediately approved. The fact that I had given up on being a researcher and needed a change probably seemed like a natural change that most people go through. Actually, the truth of the matter was that G had already reached a level that was beyond my ability. And even if I wasn't really here to discover Spencer's true intentions, I think that at that time, I would have definitely realized the limitations of my ability. As the wind danced around the helicopter, Birkin was, as usual, fixated on some document. Apparently, he was coming to Arclay on a routine basis, but he was no longer assigned there. A while ago, he had been transferred to a huge underground research facility in Raccoon City. That was the main facility for his G-Virus research. But... To tell the truth, four years ago, I really didn't think that Spencer would approve G, because it deviated from the idea of weapon, and it was created with too many unknowns left unsolved. The big difference between G and the T-Virus was that a body infected with G would spontaneously continue to mutate. Of course, a virus's genes are unprotected, so it quickly mutates. But the cells within a living organism are different. Even if the subject's makeup has been altered by the virus, the cells within the organism's body rarely can be mutated. Of course, by using outer stimuli, such as radiation, you can make mutations occur within a living body. However, a body that is infected with G continues to mutate without any outer stimuli until the host dies. Even that T-virus has lots of attributes that are quite similar to G. It has already been observed that the genetic makeup of one of the living biological weapons, a person infected with the T-virus, who has been placed in a special setting, has continuously changed. But in order for this change to occur, it is necessary to use outer stimuli as a catalyst, and one can mildly predict which changes are likely to occur. However, there are no such laws concerning a body infected with G. No one can predict just how someone infected with G will change. No matter what kind of method you use to try to cope with G, it continually changes, making that method ineffective. Seven years ago, Birkin noticed a little bit of this effect in the female test subject. There wasn't the slightest change in her appearance, but deep within her, something was constantly changing, and she continued to coexist with the virus used in the experiments. And so, after 21 years of inner mutations, even the parasite nemesis just became one more mutation within her body. The G-Virus plan was a plan to push those characteristics to the utmost limit. However, the thing that lay ahead could be an evolution to the final form for mankind. Or it could be a finale in which the organism merely dies. Could we really call that a weapon? What was Spencer thinking when he approved this plan? Even though I had been working in the information section for these four long years, I'd still been unable to figure out what Spencer was planning. And now, Spencer has stopped coming to Arclay. Spencer has stopped coming to Arclay. Almost as if something that he has been eagerly awaiting and expecting has begun. Spencer, like some mirage floating in the desert, 
had begun to grow farther and farther away from me, but I was sure that a chance would present itself to me eventually. That was, of course, if I lived long enough to see that day. Birkin and I got on the elevator and rode to the top floor, to the place where we had first met her. A man named John, Birkin's successor, a new chief researcher, was waiting there for us. He came from a research center in Chicago and was supposedly a very talented scientist, but he was a little too straight to be working at a place like this. He began to question the inhumanity of what was going on in the labs and made his opinions known to the upper-level executives. I had heard rumors about him at the information section. Everyone seemed to agree that if any information ever leaked out, he probably would have been the culprit. We ignored John and kept on walking, and then began the final disposal procedures on her. You must kill her due to her being infected with nemesis. Although only a minor amount, she started to think and become conscious. She started to act in grotesque ways. Her behavior has continued to escalate, and now she wears the face of another woman that she peeled off just like a mask. According to reports, she acted in the same way after they gave her the first starter virus. I don't know why she began to act in such a way. But because she recently killed three researchers, they have decided to dispose of her. Now that the G research is on the right track, there is no real use for a test subject like her. After constantly checking and reconfirming for three days the fact that she was dead, her corpse was, as per facility head's order, taken away somewhere. In the end, I never did find out who she was and why she was brought here. Of course, she was merely a test subject. But still, though, if she hadn't been here then, there wouldn't have been any G-plan, and Birkin and I would probably be leading different lives now. I left the Arclay Research Center thinking that very thing how much of this was according to Spencer's plan. Hmm.